Hello and welcome to Professor Pincushion. In this tutorial, we're going to be focusing on getting information and understanding the pattern envelope. You can see I have a few different examples right here. So we're going to focus on the information that you can get from the front of the pattern envelope and also from the back. Let's first focus on the front of the pattern envelope. So for this, the first thing we're going to notice is the brand, McCall's, and the pattern number. So this is 6610 and the M in front is stands for McCall. So that's another clue that we're working with the McCall's pattern. Now this number is unique to this pattern. So if you're looking for these pants and you're looking in the pattern book and it says pattern 6610, this is how you know that you have the right envelope. We also have a very nice picture on the front that shows the different examples. You'll see a letter usually next to the examples, which is telling you which different views are in this envelope. So this one has A and A. That means these are the same pants because they have the same letters. They just did it in two different colors. And this one, B, it looks like it's the same, but you'll notice that it has a wider leg here at the hemline that these pants are. So we have two different types of pants we can make in this one envelope. Also important, is to make sure that you get the right size because sometimes the pattern envelopes aren't going to have all the sizes in the same envelope. In this particular example, the size is listed right here. Now remember, retail sizing is not the same as pattern sizing. So you can't always assume that the size you go when you pick up your clothes is going to be the same for patterns. If you're unsure of your size, sometimes you'll find a body measurement chart at the top flap or on the back of the pattern envelope. So if you don't know how to take your body measurements, I definitely encourage you to watch our video on taking your measurements, and that's really gonna help you out in determining your size. Also, the nice thing about this is they have these buttons over here to let you know it's easy and it's petite friendly. So now that we've looked at the McCall's, let's quickly look at a different example. So here we have the Butterick Retro pattern. Really cute, so again, Butterick, pattern number, this number is unique to this pattern, and the B again goes for Butterick. We have our sizes this time listed at the top. The body measurement chart is on the top flap again. Now for this particular dress, it's a little bit more unique because you'll see A, A1, A3, A2. So these are essentially all dress A, they're very similar. They're just doing different variations. So you can see this one has ties on both sides, why this one only has the one shoulder. So you're just gonna do a different variation of the same dress. This one you'll see is letter B, because what they're doing for this one is they're doing a contrasting piece in the bodice. So that's why that one is separated out. Here is our quick sew, so brand name, pattern number, the K is for quick sew. We have our sizes. Now this one, they don't do size numbers. They just do extra small, small, medium, large, and extra large. So this one probably, this envelope contains all the sizes that they carry. If we look at this, we have A and B. So in this particular case, you get two different styles and the difference in the shirt is one is short sleeve and one here is long sleeve. My last example is this beautiful dress, and the brand is actually up here. So it's a Vogue pattern. This is the designer right here, and in this envelope, you only get this one dress. So there are no variations, it's just this one. And if I just move this down, we have our pattern number here on the bottom corner, and the sizes are listed right here. So again, this only has a grouping of sizes, so you wanna make sure that you grab the right envelope. Now let's focus on the information that you could find on the back of the pattern envelope. Now different pattern companies are gonna set up things differently, but they all do have some similarities. The one thing that I really like that they do list on the back of the pattern envelope is usually you'll get a line drawing, which are these right here. So it's nice to see the beautiful, fun picture that they post in the front of the envelope, but I also like to refer to these drawings because this is gonna show you a little bit more of the detail that you're going to have in your garment that you're making. So maybe from here I can see 
It's gonna have a fly zipper. There's pockets in the front, pockets in the back, belt loops, that kind of thing. Also, they usually break down the different views. So again, for the pants, we have view A, which is the slim fitting legs, and then view B, which has, looks like more of a uh, flared boot cut type of bottom on there. And then if I was to bring in, this is the retro butterick pattern. Again, you can see here's dress A, the main dress, and then the top just has the different variations. And here's B, so this one I told you has the contrasting, and I knew this because it has a different shading. So that gives you a clear idea this fabric is gonna be a different type of fabric or different color fabric than the rest of the dress. When looking at the information on the back of the pattern envelope, I know it can sometimes feel overwhelming, especially when you're a beginner, because there seems to be so much information that you're gonna have to read through. The good news is, sometimes in situations like this, we don't actually have to look at all the information because over here on this side is actually the same thing, but they just posted it in French as well. So we can ignore this section of the envelope and simply focus on this box over here if we just need the English version. I'm now gonna go over the different elements you're gonna find on the back of the pattern envelope. So the first thing usually at the top is what you're gonna see is a brief description of the garment or craft that you're making. So in this particular case, this is gonna be a dress and you'll see A and B. So that since they put them together, what they're saying is this description here relates to both views, view A and view B. So they're just giving you a brief description of some of the elements you're gonna to have to sew. So it's on the bias, it's self-lined on the bodice and midriff, it has an invisible zipper. So it just gives you a little bit more information on what you're gonna to have to do. Also, they're suggesting to purchase a separate petticoat if you wanna have more of a fuller looking skirt. I also just wanna quickly point out here at the top, they're telling you the difficulty level of this pattern piece. When we looked at the McCall's, you had the little button that said easy. Sometimes you can find this information on the back of the pattern envelope, which is in this Butterick example. Here's another example of that same thing. So this is with my Vogue pattern. And again, at the top, we have a description. So this is telling you that there's gonna be piping, the princess seams, there's gonna be boning in it, it's gonna have pockets, it has all these different elements going on. If I was to look at the difficulty level, they're saying it's average. So this is a little bit higher up than easy. So this is important to look for because if you are a beginner sewer and you don't have a lot of experience in working with patterns, maybe you wanna look for ones that are easy that doesn't have quite as many elements to it. Next, I like to look on the fabric section. Now, this is a section where they're telling you the fabrics that they recommend you use for this particular project, and you really wanna pay attention to this. So if they're suggesting you use a knit, you can't just turn around and use a woven fabric because maybe it's not gonna fit right or it's not gonna lay right. It just doesn't work. So that's why you really wanna pay attention. And you can see it right here, suggested fabrics. And they're telling you that this particular, this is for the pants, it's designed for light to medium weight woven fabrics. And they're suggesting you use denim. Now, if you find a fabric and it's a medium weight and it's a woven fabric that's like denim, but not quite denim, then it's gonna be fine to use. So they're just suggesting this, but they're telling you here what type of fabric it should be. Also, they're pointing out that for the lining of the pockets, you should also purchase muslin because you're not gonna use denim or else your pockets are gonna be too bulky. I also wanna point out if you're picking a fabric that has an obvious one-way design, if it has plaids or stripes, or if it has nap to it, you may have to purchase extra fabric in order to make sure that you lay your pattern pieces a certain way or you're matching up your plaids or your stripes. Here's another example with my quick sew pattern. So in this particular case, it's not saying suggested fabrics, it just say fabrics, but it means the same thing. So if you look at the back of the pattern envelope and it just say fabrics, it's the same thing as the one we were just looking at. So in this particular case, they have the suggested down here. They're saying interlock, jersey, textured knits, and this particular garment is designed to work with fabric that has a 25% stretch across the grain. And if you're unsure if your fabric's gonna work or not, they actually have a very handy tool that's also on the back of the pattern envelope. So right here, 
they're telling you to take a four inch piece of the knit fabric and what you're going to do is you're going to hold it here and this is telling you this is where four inches is so it should be this big you're going to hold it on this end and then on this side you're going to try to stretch it to this point if you can do that then this fabric is going to be acceptable for this pattern before consulting the yardage chart there are three things that you need to have First, you need to know what size you are. Second, you need to know which view you're making out of the pattern if there's more than one. And lastly, you need to have your fabric picked out. Once you have all three of those things, you can then look at the yardage chart to figure out how much fabric you're going to need. So if, for example, I'm doing a size 10, and let's say I'm doing pants B, and I've already picked out my denim. So with that information, we can go ahead and look at this chart and you can see the sizes are listed here in the top row. Now they actually list all sizes that this pattern comes in, regardless if it's in this envelope or not. Like this envelope is this grouping here, sizes six through 14, but there's another envelope that has these sizes, but they still show you on the back of each of the envelope, all of them. So we're gonna be going to the size 10 column, at least in my example. So everything that is underneath the size 10 is going to relate to my size. This is for view A, this is for view B. Since I'm doing pants B, I could go ahead and ignore this and just look directly in this row here. Now you'll see here we have 45 and 60. This is pertaining to the width of the fabric. Normally fabric either comes 45 inches in width or 60 inches in width. You have to look at the label that's on the fabric bolt or the tag to tell you what the width of the fabric is. And then from there, you can go ahead and use that information to pick one of these. So if I pick some denim and it's 60 inches in width, then I'm just gonna be looking at this row. So I go down the row, then down my column, which is the size 10, until both of these meet. And it's going to say that I'm gonna get one and three quarter yards of denim. That's how much fabric I need in order to make my pants for view B. Next, you're also going to need lining. Remember back to my example, it suggested that we get muslin for the lining of the pockets. So this is saying it doesn't matter what size you're doing, you're going to need a half yard of that. So that just makes it really, really handy to figure it out real quickly. And it doesn't matter what the width is, 45 or 60, you just need a half yard. Plus, we're going to need some fusible interfacing. So they usually tell you what fabric you need. And then, not all projects will have interfacing, but if it does have interfacing or lining, it should also be listed in this chart. So fusible interfacing, they're saying it's for both views. This is the typical width that the interfacing comes in. You're gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna go across the row, go down size 10, and I'm going to need one yard of fusible interfacing. Here's another example. Now this is with my quick sew pattern, and I tend to find this chart at the bottom portion of the back of the envelope. And you can see it's listed under the heading material required. And the difference is, of course, the sizes are listed in letters instead of the number sizes. And they give you only, in this particular case, the size of, or the width of the fabric is 60 inches. So if you're using fabric that happens to be 45, you may need to get a little bit more fabric than what is listed here. That's why it's always important to pay attention to the width. But you do the same sort of thing. You pick your view, and let's say I'm doing view A, and then I'm gonna go across the row until I find my size, a medium, and then I'm gonna need one and three eighths if I get the 60 inch width fabric. And again, if I, I'm doing view A, I'm also gonna need this fusible interfacing, and I just do the same thing and I'm gonna need a quarter of a yard for size medium. Here's the last example I wanna show you. Now this one is different because this is actually a pattern for a purse. So the nice thing is we don't have to worry about sizes because it's all the same size purse. You just have to pick which view you wanna do and then check the width of the fabric that you're using. And let's say I'm doing purse B and it's broken up so if you got 45 or 54 inch fabric, you're going to need one and five eighths. Or if you get the 60 inch with fabric, you're gonna need one and three eighths. Now you'll see contrast B. This is because this purse uses two different fabrics. They want you to have your main fabric and then you're gonna have a contrasting fabric. So for the contrasting one, 
you're just going to need an eighth of a yard. So that's why they're, it's listed twice here. And then you're also going to need lining and they give you that. So these ones are a little bit more simple to follow. Again, the most important thing is making sure that you're looking at your view, you're getting everything for that view, and you're looking at the width of the fabric. Any additional items that you need in order to complete your project is gonna be listed under Notions. Since A and B are listed together, that means everything right here on this line is going to pertain to both views, in this case for the pants I'm making. So regardless if I'm doing A or B, I'm gonna need a seven inch zipper, one five eighths of an inch button, and if I'm gonna purchase a belt to wear, it's gotta be between one and a half to two inches. Also, don't forget whenever you start a project that you're gonna need to pick up some matching thread. Here's an example where different views have different Notion requirements. It's still all under Notions, but it depends on which view you do, on what Notion you're going to have to get. So if I'm doing purse B, I'm gonna be looking at this category right here, this row, and I'm only gonna need three one inch buttons. I don't have to worry about the zipper unless I'm doing view C or D. Sometimes they also list optional things. In this case, it's the spray adhesive. What this is telling you is they're suggesting you get it, but it's not necessary for the completion of the project. The last thing you may see on the back of the pattern envelope is going to be the finished garment measurements. Now what this is, is a way for them to tell you how big the garment is going to be once it's all completed. Because usually it's gonna have design and functional ease added in, so it may be slightly bigger than your body measurements. If we take this example here, it's telling me that for the pants, both A and B, the finished measurement of the waist for size 10, it has the same column setup as the, the yardage chart, is 29 inches, which is slightly bigger than my actual waist circumference. Now they added the ease, so it makes it functional and comfortable for you to sit down, bend over, be able to walk, or maybe they add extra ease because they want to have the garment have a certain look. Now, if you do not see the finished garment measurements on the back of your pattern envelope, it may be printed directly on the pattern pieces themselves. Make sure to check out our other videos and visit professorpincushion.com to view our complete library with well over 150 sewing video tutorials. New tutorials are released regularly, so make sure to subscribe to be notified of the next release. Thanks for watching.